Should you really worry about what the back of your embroidery looks like? Today, I'm going to talk about when it matters and when it doesn't. Welcome to Eva Studio. My name is Elizabeth. I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pajagi, and embroidery. So when you're doing hand embroidery, everybody wants the front side, the visible side of their embroidery to look beautiful. But does it matter what the back side of it looks like? Well, in my opinion, sometimes it matters and sometimes it doesn't. So that's what I'm gonna talk about today when you need to be careful with that. But before I get into that, I just have to share a little bit of my personal history. So my grandmother was an award-winning embroiderer and she did probably every style and type of hand stitching that she heard of. She would try everything and she was probably good at everything. But her philosophy of embroidery was that the back of your embroidery should look just as neat as the front of your embroidery. Now, she was from a different generation. If she was still alive, she would be over 100 years old and she would have been what I would call embroidery police. And so that was her mindset. She expected a high level of neatness and accuracy, and that is the way she stitched things. Now for me personally, I do tend in that direction. I may be not as much of a perfectionist as she is, but I do have perfectionist tendencies. So I remember one time years ago, I went to a workshop at a major conference and the embroidery lecturer was um, talking about different embroidery techniques and she had some samples and she was passing them around for people to look at. And so um, people were looking at them and getting a close view of her stitches. And so when I got it, I looked at it, it's very nice stitching. And instinctively, I turned it over to look at the back of the stitching. And the teacher saw that I did that and she said, don't look at the back, don't look at the back. Because the prevailing mindset at that time was the back had to also be neat. And she was nervous that she would be judged if it wasn't as neat as someone thought it could be. And so that is um, historically what embroidery and embroiderers have thought that the back has to be neat. It has to be just as perfect as the front. Now I've seen a lot of people that the pendulum online has swung in the opposite direction, that it doesn't matter what the back looks like. Sometimes if there's knots or long threads that have been traveling, that that's fine. Um, and so my personal opinion is that uh, we don't need to have the same perfectionist mindset. It does, the back does not have to be perfect. But also, I do think that there are times when the back should be neat. And so sometimes it matters what the back of your stitching looks like, and sometimes it doesn't matter at all. So here's my opinion about when it matters and when it doesn't matter. The first thing you want to think about is what is this piece going to be used for and how is it going to be finished? because that's gonna have a big impact on what, what the back can look like. So if this piece is gonna be finished and the back is gonna be closed off, for example, if it's gonna be hung in a frame or if it is gonna be made into a pillow, if this is gonna be a piece in a quilt, then it doesn't have to be as neat because the back is gonna be covered up. Um, no one's gonna see it. And if there are um, knots or long threads, then they are gonna be protected by how it's finished at the back. However, if you're using a piece and the back is gonna be more open, so for example, if you're stitching on clothing or if you're stitching on a towel or a placemat, and so this is something that the back of the piece is also gonna get wear and tear, then you do have to be more careful on the back of your embroidery. Hey, when I say more careful and neat, I mean, you don't want big like loose threads. Sometimes when you're stitching, 
and your thread gets a little knot and you're stitching then there's like a little loop at the back and you don't notice it until you've been stitching for a while and then you think oh do i really have to go back and take that out sometimes you can just leave it if it's going to be framed but if your piece is going to be open then you can't leave that because in the wear and tear that kind of thing is likely to be pulled or caught and then that can end up ripping out your threads and ripping out your stitches so you do want to have it pretty smooth the second thing you need to be careful of is if you're embroidering in one piece and you have your thread and you want to go over and embroider another section that is a bit further away can you just carry your thread from one to the other or do you really have to like knot off your thread here and start again over here and you can carry your thread but i'm careful depending on your thread color and your fabric color because if you have a dark thread and you're carrying it under a light fabric or a light thread under a dark fabric, sometimes that can be visible. And that's really disappointing, even if you get something framed and you see your embroidery, but then you can see like these dark threads traveling around in the background, <clears throat> that can be really distracting from your stitches. So that's another time you might wanna be careful to keep the back of your piece neat. And the last time that it really matters is for some counted thread embroidery techniques. So a lot of times embroidery, we're just talking about um, surface stitches on fabric, but with some techniques like cross stitch, Hardinger, Bargello, black work, with some of those techniques where you're um, counting your threads on a grid of fabric and then placing your stitches, Sometimes it does matter, especially if you're going to be doing a um, pulled thread or drawn thread work so that there's holes and open spaces. Then you really want to keep the back neat because if you have any traveling threads on the back or knots on the back, then it can be visible from the front and it can really make your work look messy and not as beautiful as it could be. So I have some samples of embroidery that I'm going to show you and I'll show you what the front looks like and I'll show you what the back looks like. And keep in mind I am a little bit of a perfectionist in terms of neatness and I think I got that from my grandmother. So I'm not saying that the back has to be as neat as the front but I think with a little bit of care the back can be kept pretty neat. And so on pieces like this, this is a little sampler and the stitches are just in rows, it's pretty easy to keep your threads neat on the back because you're just stitching lines. So you can start your thread on one line and then stitch to the end of the line and finish your thread. So there's the back of that one. So that's pretty easy to keep that thread neat. And here is another similar sample. So you can see when you're just stitching lines, it's pretty easy to keep your threads neat. Uh, this one is lines, but it has a bit more um, in it. These French knots, French knots are something that because it's only one stitch, it's not a line of stitches, then by definition, you have to carry the thread on the back unless you finish the thread with each knot. So we can see on the back here, I have not done that. I have carried my thread from one knot to the other, but I've tried to be pretty careful to do it in a um, regular pattern. And I don't want to carry my threads a long way on the back. I rarely carry my threads more than an inch to get from one section to another. And that's just personal habit and preference. Um, here's an example of an embroidery that's in progress. And so we can see it's a group of stitches, a group of stitches, a group of stitches. And so I haven't carried my thread from one group to the other. I've stopped and started my thread because I'm nervous with the white fabric if I carry a thread, if that will be visible. 
However, between these little sections, I do carry my thread in between those. I don't stop and start at each little tiny section. And so with this, I've tried not to carry my thread further than I have to, and I haven't carried it through the sections that don't have other stitches around them. So here are some pieces that are finished. So this is a piece, this piece, the snowflakes, they probably have a lot of threads carrying from one section to the other just because of the design. But when it's, but it's light thread on a dark fabric that didn't show through. And when I finished it, I just put a fun fabric on the background so that you can't see. You can't see where I've carried threads on the back of this. So that's one example where it doesn't matter as much. Here are some tea towels that I have embroidered. And so these tea towels, again, they're just lines of stitches, so it's not a picture, but you would have to be pretty neat with your stitching on the back because this is gonna get a lot of wear and tear. So if there are any big knots or loops or big lines where I've traveled from one space to the other, that could easily be caught on things and my stitches ripped out. So I do have these um, carrying lines here and they are about, about an inch, just under an inch. And so I wouldn't wanna go longer than that with carrying stitches. Here's another example. You can see the stitching on the front and the stitching on the back is pretty neatly finished so that there's nothing that is gonna be easily caught and ripped out. And then the last piece, this is my tea towel, which is has a picture on it. It's starting to get a bit old now, but we can see even though it's old, I was careful to have the back of my stitching really neat because I knew this was going to get a lot of wear and tear and I didn't want it to pull on anything. Now, if you have a piece like this and after you've done it, you say, oh, there are some long pieces or there's something that looks like it's maybe not as secure as it could be, you can put some interfacing or some kind of stabilizer just around the embroidery to protect that, to hold it in place. So you can do that on tea towels or on clothing, anytime where the back's gonna be open, uh, then you might wanna do that to help secure your embroidery. On this piece, I didn't bother doing that and it has held up for years, but that's always a good option. So do you need to worry about being a perfectionist on the back of your embroidery? No, you don't. In my personal opinion, I think you should at least try to be neat and try not to have big loose threads and things just randomly hanging. You should try and keep your embroidery secure. But if you are um, enjoying your hand stitching and you're finding it relaxing and helpful, then don't let anybody else tell you how it has to be. Unless somebody else has hired you to do this embroidery for them, they don't get a vote. It's your hobby and it's supposed to be enjoyable and relaxing. For more embroidery tutorials and inspiration, be sure to check out my website, evadistudio.com.